doing the experiment um, six, which is steam distillation. We already performed two distillations, simple distillation and fractional distillation. And we already know when to use the simple and fractional distillation. A steam distillation is used when we have organic compounds that they have high boiling point. Like the, the eugenol from cloth has higher than 200 degree uh, boiling point. We cannot use that high of a temperature because it will decompose the compound. So instead of that, we are going to use steam distillation. The condition for steam distillation is that the compound that we are distilling, which in this case is the oil from the cloves, which is the eugenol, it must be immiscible in water. The steam is basically the water vapor. So what happens as the water is boiling, is going to give enough energy to droplets of the oil of eugenol and it's going to push the oil uh, mixed with the steam, brings to the, to the condenser and condenses, we can receive the mixture of water plus the oil in the receiving flask. You notice that I have these uh, rubber hoses attached. That's just for emergency in case it's needed. Um, I don't want to turn on the water to begin with because I don't want the oil to freeze in, uh, in between, in, in the condenser or, or blocks the, the um, vacuum adapter because I cannot boil anything in a closed container. It has to be open. Um, so we cannot block this. So only if I see vapor leaving or the rate of the heating is too fast, if something happened that I'm losing the sample, then I will start the, um, start the water. That's just for emergency I have it there. The other difference between the structure of the, or the setup for a steam distillation versus simple distillation is use of this um, Clayson adapter. I put a Clayson adapter before the distillation head. What's the purpose? Two purposes. One, these are natural products. They can foam a lot. And I don't want the foam to make its way to the condenser. So it's going to make this uh, curve here and the foam, it will be harder for the foam to make its way to the condenser. That's one purpose of using uh, Clayson um, adapter here. The second purpose is that it has like two openings and I'm going to add some, um, first of all, I have to grease this and I'm going to add water to a separatory funnel. And when I add water to a separatory funnel, it's going to be used to re the water. Means that if I see I it's getting, the, the flask is drying up, okay? If the flask is drying up, uh, simply, I would just open the stopcock here and get more water into the, into the boiling flask. Because during distillation, I cannot separate anything. Everything is too hot. I don't want to lose the vapor. So I'm going to use this water reservoir here. In case I need to add water, I would just open the, um, open the stopcock. The vapor pressure of the sample that I'm distilling is going to be much lower than the vapor pressure of the water. So the amount of the water that needs to be, so what, what does that mean? How is going to uh, translate in the receiving flask? Um, if the vapor pressure of the water is six times as much as the vapor pressure of the oil, that means I'm going to get six times water vapor in the condenser compared to the oil. Now, if the vapor pressure of water is 10 times more, that means I will get 10 times more water in the condenser. So I have to be prepared to have more water, to add more water until I get no, uh, no oil coming out. So the amount of the water that is going to be distilled, how much water, it depends on what is the vapor pressure of the oil that I am distilling or co-distilling with this 
uh, with the with the state. And the concept of the steam distillation is to keep the boiling point, boiling point of the mixture lower so to avoid decomposition. And the beauty of this is that because the water uh, is not miscible with the oil, the vapor pressure is going to act separately. It's not like miscible compounds in, steam in the simple distillation. In the steam distillation, water is going to generate vapor pressure, oil is going to generate vapor pressure. When the two adds together, when you have vapor pressure of water plus the vapor pressure of the oil adds up to atmospheric pressure, the liquid starts boiling. I'm going to say this slower, slower than usual because I usually speak slow. So, Water is going to boil at 100 degrees Celsius. What does that mean? At 100 degrees Celsius, vapor pressure of water equals 760. So let's ju just say we have only water here. It's going to boil at 100 degrees Celsius. The vapor pressure of oil is not zero. It has to be at least five millimeter mercury um, at the, the you know, normal temperature, so it would, or at the boiling point of the water, so we can do this distillation. That's one of the conditions. So it's going to add some vapor pressure that is coming from the oil. Whatever is added, let's say it's only 20 units is added from the, from the oil, then the water doesn't have to provide 760 millimeter. So if water provides only 760, that means the temperature can, doesn't have to reach 100. So overall, this mixture is going to boil under 100 degrees Celsius. The higher the vapor pressure of the oil, the lower the boiling point of the mixture. But the maximum is going to be 100, and that is safe for this compound. The compound is not going to be uh, decomposed. Now, since you are already practiced with the steam, uh, with the simple distillation and with the fractional distillation, the setup is very similar with the difference that differences that I mentioned already. Um, so I am going to, um, I'm going to add the sample. Five, uh, five grams of cloves has been measured. So I'm going to add that to the two uh, D boiling flask. I usually use the, the funnel. Um, I usually use the vein paper and I make a funnel with that. Okay. I would transfer. I measure 50 milliliters of uh, deionized water and I add to the boiling flask. Okay, the 50 milliliters of water measure and it will be transferred to the, to the flask. Halfway full. Um, even though I have solid pieces in there, they can act as a boiling um, stone, uh, but it's always safer to add the boiling stones for smooth uh, boiling of the sample. You would add like a three to four pieces of the boiling stone and Glass joints, they all have been greased, and this one part also is going to be uh, re greased before I connect or reconnect the, the boiling flask to place them. Adapt. Okay, going to use glue clamps for every joint because I don't want to lose the water vapor. Your clamps here. And we have all the joints sealed and greased. I would start the heat and wait for collection of, I like to collect about 40 milliliters based on the procedure or the drops that is coming uh, or the drops that I'm receiving in the receiving flask is going to be clear. 
If the drop that is coming is clear, that means it's not mixed with the oil. That means there is no more oil. So there is no need for us to collect more water. Of course, the more water we have here, more water will be condensed. The point is to collect or distill the oil, not the water. So if the drops that are coming, they are clear, then I can stop the um, distillation. So I'm going to set this at a uh, high setting, like 75, wait for it to, to boil. And the key is gentle boiling. I don't want fast boiling. I don't want any foaming to take place here. So as soon as I see it start uh, boiling, I would lower the temperature and adjust for like gentle uh, boiling. It's going to be a while before we can collect the, the uh, 40 milliliters. So the video would be paused during this time. And I would just show you like few, um, you know, minutes of the distillation when the sample is dripping or if the sample turns out to be, uh, to be um, clear. Okay, I'm just showing a uh, couple of minutes of the distillation. I just want to make the point of how the sample in the boiling flask is making foam. That's why we need to use like a clay sand uh, ad adapter here to avoid any of the foam to make it. And the first drops that are actually condensing here, see it looks very, um, it's like oily mixture of oil and water. It is, it is uh, cloudy because the oil is not soluble in water. It makes this distiller to be, uh, to be cloudy. Uh, we just received the first drop up here has not uh, been enough to fill up this area to move down to receiving plus, but it's coming. So I'm just going to pause the video again to wait for um, collection of the about 40 milliliter of the sample. While we are waiting for the for the distillation, we want to use the time and prepare for the next step. Uh, one of the items needs to be measured is the mass of empty beaker with a wood chip. Um, this is for basically one of the last steps, but we do need the mass. So we are going to measure the, uh, the mass of the beaker. And the final product later on is going to be measured in the same beaker. The difference, it would be the mass of the, the original um, oil that it is recovered. Uh, like any essential oil, because you, know, you can't get high percent yield. Um, of this. That's why they are so expensive because um, how much of the original is, is oil. Uh, so we are not expecting like more than like seven, eight percent, maybe, um, you know, uh, but we want to get the mass so we can calculate that percent recovery. And I'm also going to take a picture of it. This, the reason it says it has to be labeled because if we are more than two to three groups sharing the same fume hood or same hot plate. We want to make sure that uh, we take our own um, sample. We have collected about 40 milliliters. That's where we are going to stop the distillation. When we stop the distillation, um, since this oil is mixed with water, we are going to extract into organic layer um, to separate from the, from the water. So we are using methylene chloride as the uh, extracting solvent. So um, I'm going to just separate and take this sample into the pit where I have my separated final setup. And uh, I'm adding another graduate cylinder because it's hot and, and wait until it, it cools down. Okay.